Hey, it's Bernie Goldbach on the 8th of June, 2014, looking at the Irish Sunday Times. But first, Inside Without Borders, a charity to look at, Medicine Without Borders, msf.ie, war surgery in the youngest country, two-page handout, four-page handout actually, showing where this admirable charity works, bringing its support, bringing its support for people into places that isn't possible without your help. MSF. E. Mentioning it because charities are taking a big hit in Ireland because of mismanagement. These guys aren't. They deserve everything you give them. Sometimes leads with gas deal turns the heat up on the World Cup. If you're listening to me on audioboo.fm stroke top gold, you probably hear the same kind of story in your local news anywhere in the world. Inside really good spread called the FIFA files, galore, bungs galore, power politics and energy deals. Documents that Sunday Times has made available show how a tiny desert state with virtually no football infrastructure and sweltering summer temperatures of up to 50 degrees centigrade, but with an immense treasure tre- chest financed by vast gas and oil reserves, walked off with the rights to host the world's biggest sporting uh, tournament. Phil Hogan, a guy that's uh, bombastic and he's a minister, Mark Ty's got the story about him being told by the Irish courts, you got to bear the costs of bringing this case against Vincent Brown, the broadcaster, because, well, you misled us in the affidavit you you um, offered up as evidence. Mothers buried with tomb babies, another story that Ireland's getting global recognition for in the wrong way. Justine McCarthy points to a local historian who discovered that 796 children may be buried in a mass grave in the west of Ireland. She said that three mothers are interred there with their babies. Terrible story. That's going to run for the rest of the year for sure. Graduates are going to be running a long time before they get back to where they used to be. Graduates' wages are at a 10-year low. Inside the Sunday Business Post, Gerald Flynn's got the story saying, graduates, students that are graduating this year face uh, the lowest wages for first-time jobs ever in the last 10 years, down to about 350 to 380 euro a week. It's pretty low. So what they, could they do in the meantime? Well... Do online study. Take a job faster. Gabriella Monaghan picks up Brian Mulligan, who runs the Center for Online Learning at Sligo Institute of Technology. He says, broadly agrees with uh, businessman Jack, businesswoman Jackie, um, Levine's, uh, Jackie Lavin's point of view. Students are wasting too much time and money by doing full-time primary degrees. Well, let me tell you from experience, you're going to have to have a program set up to where what you're learning is really put in the right kind of professional status. It just can't be a really nice um, digital program. It has to have the accreditation. Well, did you know Google and AIB may be exploiting children? Ethan Mullen picks up the campaign for commercial free education, CCFE, and they say, let's put an end to all these schemes by these organizations like Google or AIB the bank or anybody else that tries to make kids say things or do things that is commercial, things that are commercial the union, international national, the Inter- Irish National Teachers Organization said, okay, look, it's essential to ensure that pupils are not exploited for commercial means, although they don't say no to money coming from Google or the banks. The story inside Sunday Business Post really, well, Catherine Manny has it. Do you really want to know all these names? There are hundreds of them. Catherine Corliss is the historian that got the names from the local authorities of children that were put in care of a group of nuns, the Von Sikors order. And, geez, i just amazed by the story. Um, she picks up the uh, following story of a man in Mayo, born at the Von Sikors home, fostered by a family he recently discovered, thanks to the historian Catherine Corliss, that he has nine brothers. Uh, lots of people have problems tracing that kind of lineage, especially those who are put up for adoption in America and given new birth certificate. So if you care about this story, you want to make an impact, there it is. A bank draft or check made payable to the Home Children's Graveyard in, um, in the care of St. Jarlis Credit Union, Tomb County, Galway, might be a place to go. There's money they need to maintain, basically a, more than a grotto over this modified septic tank, which holds hundreds of corpses, apparently. We'll find out if there's a proper investigation. 
Tomb's only the beginning. The historian Connor Mulvey in the News Focus section of the Sunday Business Post says, look, you got to look into the archives. You've got to find out stuff like, well, the mortality rate was horrific for kids in Ireland in the early 30s. Um, just mortality, which you'd see in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, 35%, um, 34% in Tomb, um, Pelletstown, Dublin, Ross Cray and Bessboro running at 34, 37 and a half and 39 percent. Awful, awful. So compared to the 35 percent in in tomb, the issue isn't actually um, just nuns not caring for malnutrition, mal malnourished babies, but perhaps the state of Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, actually letting kids being used as basically as inmates, inmates for vaccine trials. All kinds of new dimensions of where this is headed. The state's complicit in this. It's really bad news for the history of Ireland. Really bad news. Lots of other stuff in the papers. I'll think there's zeroing on things that are of interest. Jane Rafino's got some more stuff of interest in the technology section of the Sunday Business Post. Um, she points out something. Following uh, Apple's release of the programming language Swift, the crazy little job offerings or postings for five years' experience with Swift, pointing out that... Um, Big giants control the conversation about what people talk about, and then uh, you do the piss take on the back of that. It is a fact. We're going to we'll see people uh, three or four years from now asking for that. Experience, five years, Swift. And you could say, well, look, I've coded for Xcode or Apple, and maybe get away with it. But <laughs> it is kind of funny. Gather around. Here's a battle plan to stop rape as a weapon of war. Co-authored story by Angelina Jolie and William Haig. They've got an event going on in the Excel uh, Center in London this week, Tuesday to Thursday. And uh, what they have is a lot of little ways of trying to keep rape out of the, out of, out of the um, techniques used by, by armies. And she says, look, simple measures like installing lighting in refugee camps where women are, are interred, making sure that there's groups of people going out gathering firewood, not just lonely women, and uh, to never grant amnesty, never. Grant amnesty to incidents of sexual violence in armed conflict. Those are good, powerful things that could be done. Definitely powerful things that could be done. Okay, getting towards the back of the paper, some things I want to point out. Um, one is here, Nicola Byrne says, uh, we've been left poor as uh, technology allows us to do many things for herself. She says, hey, wouldn't it be nice instead of having to troll around for so much information, I can have it all just bubble up in front for me, to which I'd say, Nicola, Google Now will do that. Trust Google with your mail, and who knows what will bubble up and tell you stuff you need to do. Time to learn new lessons. Colonel Morin, who does a funny business show, says, why don't we um, have these lecturers in third-level institutes running a 21st century timetable and teaching in the summer? I'd have words for Connell about what I'd have to give up to do that. A lot of prep time that ensures we have high quality education standards. If I can turn the paper, I'll, I'll give you the last page I'm trying to get to. And it's really another horrific story. This time in China, images that you can see photographed following Tiananmen Square of how uh, men were assassinated, bound, trussed, made to kneel, and then killed. Um, in Hong Kong, Hong Kong's the only place in Chinese soil where um, June 4th is marked as Tiananmen Square and uh, nowhere else in the Republic of in, in China. Finally, how about having something to eat? You can log on to sundayclub.ie, enter the code Fine Dining, and you might win a luxury blue book voucher. Hmm, that'd be good. In the meantime, if you can't afford that, can't, can't be lucky enough for that, Sunday Times says there's options to dining out for 10 euro. At 100 restaurants around Ireland this summer. So I pulled it out. We'll see how that, how that pans out. Okay, I'm standing in a place. I'm trying to declutter outside. You can see that over the summer, you might see it's become something more, more usable for the kids. And I'm actually in the official decluttered room. So if you follow me on different networks, you know that for months I was trying to get this thing decluttered. And now it is. It's a little study I had. But it's done thanks only to Ruth, my wife, who just said, look, we're not going to have any more of this. <laughs> and she raised it to the ground. Fair enough. You want to find out more about my adventures? InsideView.ie is where I blog. Top gold and good social networks where I babble. I'm Bernie the Blown American, and it is blowing outside today in Ireland. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.